and to finish by conclusions and perspectives. So, okay, go on now, recall some basic GT systems. I do this short record because perhaps not everybody is very uh, uh, used with the rabbit uh, farming and rabbits as a rule. Uh, you see here the digestive systems with the upper part, the stomach, small intestine, and so on, liver, pancreas. It's similar functions like for monogastric animal, like the poultry or pig, for example. And the distal part, colon, cecum, particularly, is linked for, you have to see similar to herbivore animals, like uh, more or less like ruminants with a high microbial activity. Just this recall about the general digestions. The rabbit is an herbivore in red, cecum, proximal colon, and also monogastric, enzymatic digestion, the upper part of the digestive systems. And he produced two types of feces. One hard feces that you, you see very easily that are rejected, and another type of feces that are the psychotroph that are recycled and ingested totally by the rabbit. This is about, you see, for uh, an intake of 130 gram per day of pelleted feed, you have more or less 40 gram rejections and 25 gram which is recycled and ingested by the rabbit. So we will look at this global uh, design. You see here, more or less, um, the, all the digestion is working for the rabbit with stomach, small intestine and cecum, the microbial digestion in the cecum, enzymatic digestions in the intestine and stomach and the importance of the secotrophs and the secotrophy. And for example, a good uh, digestion is similar to have a good production, production of energy for maintenance, but also for production of growth, muscle, tissues, production of milk, or pregnancy of or fur, sometimes depending on the breed of the rabbit. Uh, now, taking into account the system of digestion for the rabbit, now look at the metabolic regulation, particularly for tropical climate. Globally, tropical climate there is depending also on the regions, but two seasons more or less depending, depending on where you are. But you have wet seasons, dry season, with average monthly temperatures that do not drop below 18 degrees throughout the year. And commonly around 30 or more, 38, 30 degrees. And uh, what's a fact which is important is a humidity level that is generally very high, over 80%. So for every animal, huh, for every mammals, particularly, there is several adaptations. And the most important is to resist uh, uh, against humidity and high temperature. So there is a thermic stress that implicates, that imply thermoregulations for the animal. Those thermoregulations, it is, as you know, probably a physiological, physiological function to maintain the internal temperature with, within physiological limits, that's called homeothermy. So the functions 
this function controls the balance between heat productions and heat losses. Heat productions of an animal is a byproduct of its metabolisms. For example, the digestion produce heat. Heat losses is to an expenditure of the heat through radiations or conductions and convections or evaporations, for example, perspirations, cutaneous level or respiratory level. Uh, for the rabbits and the hot climate, yeah, since uh, rabbit is a smaller animal, generally, uh, smaller animals are a bit less sensitive to the heat because they have a better relationship between the body surface and the volume of the body. And so they have a better heat losses by radiations, conditions, and conventions. Globally, slow growth animals that are not very selected for a high growth and so on are less sensitive to heat stress because their production of metabolic heat is a bit lower. So one adaptation to heat and a morphologic adaptation to heat is to enlarging the surface of exchange. For example, for the rabbits, one uh, surface of exchange is the hairs. You see here the photo for the hair. It is hair in desertic area of the North America. Uh, and you see here some coefficients of exchange of the hair, which is very high about four times the coefficient for the whole animal. And take into account that there is no transpiration for the rabbit, okay? Uh, so the rabbit has to evacuate the heat only by respirations. And also keep attention that there is only respiration by the nose. At 95%, the rabbit is, uh, the respiration is by the nose and very, very few by the mouth, okay? Contrary to a dog, for example, but that evacuate many heat by respiration by the mouth. So a consequence of this e stress on the rabbit performances is that when you have too much heat, the rabbit start by decreasing its feed intake and increase the water intake, okay? Particularly if you give dry feed, pelleted or not, but dry feed. For reproducing animal, you have also decrease of fertility, okay? and also the uh, reductions of the reproductive efficiency. The receptivity of the female for the male are generally lower when it is too hot or too humid. Hot climate is uh, one of the main causes for uh, behavior which is not very normal for maternal behavior and sexual behavior. Or standard behavior where it is too much. Uh, you also have, for example, if you have a lower feed intake, generally it is associated to a decrease of the lie weight and maturity of the female rabbit is a bit longer, a bit later. If the budding dough is decreasing the feed intake, generally the litter weight and the litter size is reduced due to the breed, but also due to the climate. And the mortality of the suckling rabbits also could increase due to 
too high temperatures. Um, here is a schematic presentation of heat production and energy intake. You can find some of these uh, curves in the book Rabbit Nutrition. And you have uh, a possibility to download this book, Rabbit Nutrition, on the website of the World Rabbit Science Association. Uh, so, you see here um, that you have on the axis X temperatures and energy on the axis Y. And in a hot environment, the rabbits have to dissipate this metabolic heat. When you have in the green area, the thermo neutral zone, okay, all is okay. The rabbit has no very much problem to dissipate the heat. Uh, when you have higher temperature, you will see here that the energy uh, is very is lower. Okay, and you have a heat production for the acclimatized damage, which is low, which is lower than for uh, an animal in red here, which is non acclimatized to the heat. So, adaptation, and particularly through the breed, or through the feeding to the animal, to uh, the high environment, the hot environment, is very important. Uh, one of the way to dissipate metabolic heat for the rabbits is to use uh, the skin vasodilatation. Okay, it is a, a procedure which is less expensive than uh, the, the least expensive procedure uh, compared to heat, and particularly the skin dilatation uh, for the hairs, for example. And also, you can uh, use a decrease of feed intake to decrease the heat increment. And also, the third way is to try to evaporate some water by the respirations, hot water to dissipate heat. Okay. Other adaptation to hot environment are uh, behavioral uh, adaptations. For example, a lower activity or laying down or activity during the fresh period, for example, during the night. You can have so digestive adaptations, lower intake, but also better, better feed efficiency. Uh, one of the way to produce heat uh, with digestions, this is the protein accretions produce more metabolic heat than lipids. So when you formulate, maybe look at the correct level of protein, not excess of protein. Also, uh, since energy efficiency for protein body deposit is 70 to 83 percent for lipids. So the nutritional recommendations is to increase a bit the lipid content of the feeds if it is possible when you have a hot environment. Uh, it is possible when you are using pelleting feed with a mix of ingredients and you can so that formulate more precisely to try to fight against the hot environment. But there is uh, two key points in rabbit nutrition for a farmer and for technicians that look at the farmer is to look particularly to the breeding door and the management of the body energetic reserve of this breeding door along all the career of in, in accordance with productive levels. 
That means that for a breeding doe having a low productive level, there are no many uh, problems. For breeding doe having a high productive level with a high litter size and also a reproduction rate which is quite intensive, you have to supply very good uh, feeding and to be sure that the feed intake and the water intake is very good for this breeding dog. And for the fattening rabbits, you have to go to, 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 to look particularly to a good balance for fiber intake compared to the energetic intake to obtain an optimal growth. So we will look more in detail at these points just after. For example, you can also have uh, also two other type, type of adaptations. Here is a curve uh, that shows the relationship between performance and diets according to temperature. Okay. For example, uh, temperature is in the X, performance is the growth, for example, uh, on the high Greek axis. You see here that the, the curve B, the response to the diet B, to the diet B is always higher than A diet because this means this is, a, this is a difference in the formulations. For example, for the same temperature, the A diet give a lower performance than the B diet. This means that probably for the same temperature, that is a problem in energy, in amino acid supplies, or vitamins, and so on. But you can also look also at the B and C curve. With the same temperature, we have the same performance, but for high temperature, you have a response to diet C that was, for high temperature, a bit higher than B diet for such and uh, extreme conditions. This means that the formulation was adapted to the high temperature, particularly uh, for the C diet. So it's possible also to uh, improve the resistance of animal to the hot uh, and uh, tropical condition, for example, through the feeds. This is some example here of studies that were performed and that show the adaptation of the rabbit to uh, high temperatures. Remember one thing that if you use pelleted feed, dry feed or fluor, if you do not provide a good water supply, this means that your feed intake will stop within one day. It's very important if you use dry feed to look at the quality and the quantity of the water. Just here below, you have standard regulation of intake and excretion for adult rabbit with three different temperature. And you will see on the right column written in red that the water feed intake is increasing a lot for 30 deg 32 degrees. You see the ratio is about eight, three times higher that than in 25 degrees. Also the water to feces, the discretion is also higher, of course, and the urine is higher. So you go higher in temperature, 35 degrees or more, the ratio will be higher. Here is an intake regulation for the breeding dough that were fed pelleted feeds. It is dry feeds, only 10% or 11% of humidity in this feed, 90% dry matter. And this is a comparison with respect to a group 
of animals that was housed in 23 degree environment. And so when you increase this uh, uh, temperature, so the yellow one is a reference to 100, you increase by seven degrees uh, to 30 degrees in red, you have a drop from this uh, breeding dough of almost 30% of the feed intake and also 20% of the water intake. But the milk intake is very, milk production is very uh, impacted with a 30% reduction of water intake. So for the breeding dough, when you see here, it is uh, some other uh, figures for the rabbit. It is for breeding dough, that is uh, milking dough, milking dough in 80 degrees uh, environment, that is uh, homeothermic for the rabbit. The pellet intake is very high and very high for European breed uh, of rabbit dough. And you see the pellet intake is about 400 grams per day, sometimes higher depending on the conditions. But for the same animals, by with 30 degrees, we have only 300 grams of intake. Okay. So again, caution to water, solid feed intake dry feed intake impose a good water quality and quantity. You see the water intake here for 400 grams is about 800 grams milliliter of water per day. Okay. Some though are eating for 450 grams of feed pellets, so they drink more or less one liter per day. Okay. In tropical conditions, for effectively, this figure will be lower. But anyway, look at the water. You see here is some figures for fattening rabbits. More or less the same tendency, but with lower variations because here, the pellet intake is normally 160 grams per day, but drop to 123 in hot conditions, while the water intake is increasing by 400 grams more or less. And you see the weight gain, 37 grams per day, and only 25. Uh, Weight, gram per day of weight gain. That means the rabbit resists more easily to the fresh temperature than for the hot temperature. So here you have us. You, uh, you will have some basics about the regulation, and now we will look at the recommendations of nutrition for uh, an adaptations on uh, an, an analysis of the breeding systems. First, look at the quality of the feed. Here is uh, a scheme uh, that uh, describe a non-intensive uh, rabbit breeding system. <clears throat> That mean, for example, you will have gestations number one, you see on the left part of this design, followed by a lactation, okay? And a weaning uh, that is usually uh, about uh, 35 days, but would, could be longer. The lactation could be longer, 60 days, for example. And the fattening could start at only 60 or 70 days. It is a non insensitive system. And the gestations too with a matting could occur only at the winning of the previous litter. 
with such systems, the reproduction uh, is a bit expensive. You have four, five liters a year with six green rabbit, for example. And the growth of this non intensive system is not uh, very, very high, but correct at uh, around 25 grams per day to reach, for example, a live weight of 2.3 kilo at 100 days. These systems are used also in Europe, huh? in depending on the farming system. For example, for organic uh, rabbit farming, we have such systems more or less. The income costs are low, low cost of feed, low cost for prophylaxis, or low cost for renewing the livestock. And you can have, for such system, feeding system with forages, grazing, several byproducts for a low cost, finally. If you pass to an intensive systems, uh, it is two opposites, huh? okay? You, are, you see here, yes, uh, first gestation followed by lactation and the matting is uh, 10 days after the first little birth, okay? So for a doe, they can have at the same time lactations and the starting of the second gestation, okay? And so second lactation and so on. So you can have much more intensive reproduction rate with a fattening, for example, every six weeks. So six weeks between two parturitions, that means more or less six to seven liters of seven or eight win young rabbit per year for a do. We see such intensive system, it is quite common in European uh, uh, area for in France, in Spain, Italy, and one law is able to produce more or less 50 rabbits per year. Uh, and the growth of these uh, uh, rabbits breed or hybrid breed, uh, very highly selected, and with a growth which is around 40, 45 grams per day, sometimes higher, and they to reach uh, a live weight uh, at slaughter of 2.3 kilo at 17 days. But for such systems to, to be, to work with such systems, it is necessary to have much higher income, income uh, of fees, pelleted fees only, that they buy, very well formulated, a good prophylaxis plant with some uh, drugs, antibiotics, and so on, vaccinations, and also a high renewal, renewing rate of the livestock of door, and also a good housing environment with ventilation, eating, and so on. And so for such intensive systems, you should have, you must have a very well-balanced painted feeds and the feeds are uh, obviously costly. So you have, uh, I show you two opposite systems and you have uh, plenty of systems intermediate, of course. But whatever the system, you have to uh, uh, supply uh, energy, protein, uh, etc., for the different function of the rabbits. Mm -hmm. So you have to respond to several classes of needs. 
can see maintenance, gestation, lactation, depending on the liter size, of course. Growth also, that depends on temperature, oceanic systems, for the thermal regulation and physical activity also, for example. You know that there are three basic nutrients, energy, protein, and also for the amino fiber, plus also uh, some other elements, vitamins, minerals, oligo elements. This is a curve that define globally uh, and defines the nutritional needs uh, on the X uh, axis. You have the nutrient intake, by example, if you speak about lysine intake, okay? And on the left part, on the high grade axis, you have the performance. If you have not enough lysine intake, you are in caverns and the growth could be very low or null. Okay, yeah. Within a range, the mid range, you are here the optimal range in green, but you can have also an excess of amino acid. For example, for methionine, if you have excess of methionine, you are a lower intake and lower performances. So you have response curves here with a shape which is different according to the nutrient and also to the chemical components. So when you uh, recommend some uh, nutrients level and to adapt for formulation of it, you have also to use safety margin you will see here an example of performance and on the x-axis it is supply in nutrient. The animal have a potential of productions for, for growth or for milk productions. In the red you have the animal response curve with the potential which is the maximum that you can reach. So your feed should supply sufficient uh, nutrients, for example, to have within the limits in the two uh, spotted lines here, okay, which is a minimum requirement, but you give a bit more, deep, as we call the safety margin, okay, but not too much no excess, no waste of uh, amino acid or anyone. This safety merge is to include some uh, productions uh, viability in the, uh, for example, in the feed industry and so on. So Matt, now we look at uh, recommendation. Uh, Nutrition recommendation, nutritional recommendation for the rabbit. Uh, what of the point which is very important, I already said it below before, is the breeding dog. It is the most important uh, animal of the farm because this is the engine of your rabbitry. And I say already in a past lesson that the uh, rabbit dough is able to produce a lot of milk. You see, compared to its live weight, she is able to produce 80 grams of milk per kilo of live weight and per day. It is the same than for a cow and much more than for a sow. Okay. She is figure here in under European semi-intensive system with a six-week delivery interval. Here also is the export of protein and the export of lipids via the milk 
for the rabbit do on the same comparison with co and so with the same system you will see here that the rabbit do is sporting at least three times more lipid in with the milk huh? and three times more protein with the milk compared to the co so that means that if you have such greater exports that means a higher requirements and for the life dating though you have to be very careful for the feeding and the intake of feed so for the breeding though if you have a semi-intensive farming system with a six week delivery interval and the high delivery interval but the time delay between two liters so, so relatively short delay for such systems we have expenditure of energy for the maintenance much more energy is a requirements for lactations too and we see here and also a little part is for the gestations you see in the red uh, design so be careful and the total requirements here with the maintenance activity and so on you have a total requirement which is a black curve you see here so during the lactations and just after the birth look very carefully to the feed intake of the rabbit dough particularly if the dough have a high liter size of morph if you have at least uh, four or five rabbits, it is not so high, but if you have more than five kids, for example, from six to seven, and even more kids, look even more to the intake of feed and also the water intake uh, if the feed is dry. Alors, that means that for European systems, such intensive systems, the intake is not sufficient to cover all the need of the rabbit dough when she is milking, particularly. You will see the deficit here, which is uh, about 10% of the intake on energy is in a deficit. And here, we have a, sh a green area uh, when she is uh, when you are weaning the litter and when you, the, the milking curve is uh, dropping so the production of milk is reducing the intake could be a bit higher than the needs and so such systems the dough is recovering energy uh, for the body condition. But if you have uh, an energy intake, for example, under hot climate, when the intake is a bit lower, of course, the deficit could be larger. You will see here. And the uh, body conditions of the dough will be uh, very low. And she could have even a, a loss of light weight. And this produces lower fertility and also could uh, uh, shorten the career with mortality on a higher curling rate and also higher mortality rate for the litters. So when you have such hot climate, be careful to have not two intensive systems, but maybe uh, a bit extensive rhythm of reproductions and not the reproduction rates we, we have in Europe, for example. Energy, this is a, a scheme that shows the energy balance for a building dough with a low intake because of hot climate. And you will see here, you can have more or less an intake with a small deficit of energy intake. And you obtain such solutions by extending the delivery interval 
to nine weeks, for example. You can have also a lower liter size, and you also can increase the energy concentration of the feed. So you compensate for uh, energy output through the milk by a higher digestible energy intake, for example. Also, you can, uh, if you should, if you want to have better performances, you can look also at the hair conditioning, maybe, or refreshing the hair with water or air pads, for example, or something like that. We come back again to this regulation of feed intake here yeah, for lactating dose, for growing rabbits. And you see also just in under the digestible energy intake according to the digestible energy concentration of the feed. So within 15, 26, 26 degrees, you have the correct regulation for the digestible energy intake, well, either for the fattening rabbits or for the dough. But over 30 degrees, because you have feed intake predictions, the digestible energy intake maintained for the dough is possible if you have a high digestible energy concentration, for example, you can incorporate lipid incorporation instead of glucid of, uh, uh, sugar incorporation. If you have a low digestible energy intake for growing animal, for fattening animal, it's not easy to compensate with a higher digestible energy concentrations, but you can also add some uh, uh, lipids in the formulation. You can also calculate what is possible to expect for a growth, a prediction of a growth. For, for example, for a 1.5 kilo rabbits with a feed intake, you see the feed intake at 18 degrees is 80 gram, but for 30 degrees uh, of environment is 60 gram. And so the energy intake is lower. Maintenance requirement also, but the cost requirement is also lower. And the growth finally is lower, only 21 gram at 30 degrees and 37 gram at 18. These figures are uh, produced when you have a pelleted diet with a quite higher uh, concentration of digestible energy, yeah, which is 11 megajoule of digestible energy per kilo of dry matter. Uh, and so the, uh, you have, for example, here, uh, several studies which were produced that uh, uh, to, 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 to try to respond to the heat stress of the animal. If you increase by 10, 10% the digestible energy concentrations, or you increase protein and lysine, you, you cannot have a good improvement for uh, fattening rabbits because they regulate their feed intake. When you increase the feed, in, the feed concentration, the feed intake is a bit lower, as I speak in the previous uh, lessons. Uh, similarly, when you increase the protein from 13% to 20%, you have, uh, in the same way, no very no real level increase of the digestible uh, nutrients, digestible protein, uh, but a small increase, only 5% increase. Okay. If we look at the energy and protein requirement for the breeding dough, you know that you need to have uh, for protein at least 10 amino acids that are essential, so the 21, 
you to we have to produce this uh, and to supply this essential amino acids to by the feed. Here you see the feed intake uh, regulation according to the digestible energy concentration. So you see that the fattening orbits is reducing its intake from nine or 9.5 megajoule per kilo of digestible energy, while the lactate window is reducing its intake a much for much higher concentrations. If you have very high concentration, about 11, for example, you have a starting of the decrease of the intake. So if you have lower intake, you also have lower protein intake. That is true uh, for the fattening and true for the dough. So for the rabbit, you have to adjust the dietary protein concentration in the feed to uh, correct, to have a correct intake of protein. So when you formulate, the reasoning is for a ratio of digestible energy to digestible protein. Well, the relative supply, so that means this is a relative supply in digestible energy and digestible protein because of the regulation of the feed intake of the rabbit. You will see here in the in pink uh, background in Europe for dough, and you will find it in the books uh, like food uh, nutrition of the rabbit, for example. You will find that for energy, we recommend a digestible energy concentration between 10 and 10.2 megajoule per kilo of feed respect to a protein level of 12.5 to 13.5 gram per kilo with a minimum level of lysine of 0.8% and sulfur amino acid, SAA, sulfur amino acid of 0.6%. So uh, the good range for lactating dough, an edge under six weeks delivery interval is to have uh, 11.5 to 12.5 gram per gram of digestible protein per megajoule of digestible energy. If you have a currency in protein, this means lower milk production of a, and also for effectively, obviously, a, a lower liter weight and also a lower fertility for the next, the next gestation. But also, Excess in protein means lower liter survival and lower prolificacy. So in the European condition, you have that. And for the dough, for the fatness in Europe, the recommendations are a bit different. You see here that the ratio digestible protein to digestible energy runs from 11.6 to 12.2 digestible protein by megajoule of digestible energy. This is true for fattening, okay? So in Europe, in your farming system, we have different feed, different pelted feed according to the type of rabbit we have. So it's what's for energy and protein. Uh, if we look at the lipids, uh, there is no real minimum of lipids uh, to, to, to bring or to supply because naturally the ingredients of the diets give sufficiently lipids. But it may be necessary particularly for the breeding dough, to enrich the digestible energy content. And it's possible to enrich by, particularly if you are a hot environment. 
For example, you can use uh, rice brands, uh, whether the herd or not. This is not the herd, it's particularly more rich in energy. You can also use meal obtained by simple pressure uh, with eight to nine lipids in coconut or palm kernel meal, for example. And also for the rabbits, and particularly for the fatteners, I already speak about this point in my past course, but you have to look to the fiber recommendation because the rabbit is an herbivore. For the breeding dough, even for the breeding dough, you should have over 15% of acid detergent fiber, or more or less is similar than 15% crude fiber. The calvency means higher risk of digestive problems for the dough. Excess of fiber means that you have a lower digestible con energy content, so you can have lower performances, but no more, no problems of health, of mortality or something like that. Only lower performance. Okay. So there is some problem with the sound. Is it okay? Okay, it's okay. Okay. For the fatteners, it is much more important to look at the fiber content of the feed, particularly in our intensive European systems. And I show this meta analysis uh, with seven studies and 22 diets that you will see that for when you increase the concentration of acid detergent fiber in the feed, you reduce the risk of digestive problem for uh, the fattening rabbit after the weaning. And particularly, you have to look at the lean-in uh, supply. Currency of fiber mean higher risk of digestive trouble and excess for like for the dough, but not the same range, uh, mean lower performances. So if you have moderate or low production level in the farming system you are looking, you can use uh, uh, forage based feeding that produce sufficient uh, fiber. Here is uh, uh, the relationships between ADL concentration, ADL mean acid detergent lignin in the feed, and you have also the relationship with the health risk index after weaning, and particularly for digestive problems, that means diarrhea and so on. This is a meta-analysis with nine diets, 19 diets, and for six studies without antibiotics, but under the European farming system. Be careful. And you will see that we defined a minimum requirement of 5% of acid detergent lean. And sometimes, uh, be careful to the analysis of the ADL in your feed, because sometimes it is not really truly in analyzed, particularly when you have feed stuff with char or rich in tannins or rich in phenols, such, for example, in Europe, you have grape mark, grape seed meal, for example. Okay. So, the good relationship with fiber and health risks. Fiber for health because we have an herbivorous animal. 
Um, when you look at requirements and feeding strategy, you have to look to uh, minerals and vitamins, and particularly when you are doing the lactation, you have high requirement of calcium. You see here, more or less 11 to 13 gram per kilo feed is necessary. You have to have also phosphor and a good ratio, phosphor to calcium. Vitamins also uh, is important. You can have in various ingredients, in urine folder, in cereal, in cakes, and so on. Uh, yeah. Remember that for uh, fat-soluble vitamins, you have to provide them. Uh, the vitamins A, D, E, and K, and beware the excess, for example, the hypervitaminosis for D and for A. And uh, for water-soluble vitamins, you have not to supply these vitamins because by the feed, because they are supplied by the secotrophy. Thanks to secol microbiota activity. So you can find such recommendations in the books and tables already. And when you buy a pelleted feed, the uh, factory prepares the feed with a, a mix of uh, these mineral and vitamins that we call pre-mix. And there are specific premix for the rabbits that are very different for the premix that are used for poultry or for ruminants. And particularly, the premix contain frequently some coccidiostatics or drug. And beware, this coccidiostatic should be specific for the rabbit. Do not buy a premix sell for poultry to use it to formulate uh, rabbit feeds. Just a look at uh, uh, a review of the main requirements for rabbits, but under intensive European production systems. Okay. It is to reach optimal performances for hybrid lines of rabbits under optimized housing conditions with a climate which is quite temperate, sometimes hot in the summer for all regions, but not so humid okay, than in tropical conditions. So to be to have quite a, a summary, remember that uh, hot climates limits the duration of the breeding season of rabbits. A breeding doe able to produce seven liters a year in a thermoneutral zone like Europe will give only five to four to five liters in hot climate. Roast performances also more or less under tropics are a bit lower and range depending on the feeding system also and feed and housing and so on, but could run from 20, 25 or 30 grams a day. Why we have 40, 50 grams. But it is due to the climate and the, uh, all the elements of the uh, farming system we have. Remember that Production level is uh, implying nutrition, nutritional need. So high production level, high and balanced recommendation you need. With, so you have to ask which breed, which line of rabbits I use. Uh, I have to look at the climatic regulation or hair conditions to obtain such high production. So that means that you have elevated costs and also costs for 
updating the feed. So in brief, if you want to copy and pass the European conditions, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, you can have also some other systems with medium production level wanted. Uh, for example, you can use pelleted feed or even feed under a floor presentation. You can use forages or plants that are very low cost. And so you limit the cost and you have a good uh, economic balance according to the cost and the, uh, the money you produce, the production you expect. You can have with rabbit also much moderate production level with only plants or forage or byproducts, household wastes and so on. So, so such low feeding costs according to the productions mean a good economical balance also uh, for this system. So there is not uh, one system to produce from it, but several systems and all the systems should be adapted to the farmer, to the climate, to the material you have, to, and so on. There is no elected uh, better production system, but several production systems that are uh, so well also work. So this is for the quality of the feed. And so remember quality of the water, huh? if you have dry feed. And also in Europe, you, you look, we look at the quantity of the feed for the growing rabbit and why we look at this one. In intensive European farming system, we have a relationship between quantity of feed given after weaning and because we have a relationship with the digestive health of the animal. And we look uh, that we will show that uh, we have, when we have a limitation of the feed intake, we can improve the resistance of, to digestive tribal for the young rabbit after weaning. I just show here uh, uh, a slide that remember uh, some basic about uh, the studies that look at the digestive troubles and at looking to the health of the rabbit. This is this the program was starting 20 years ago. You see, it's a very old one. But the system is the same, the basics are the same. You should, to look at health of rabbit, you need to use large scale standardized studies with a high number of replicates in your experiments. It's very, very important to reach a statistical validation of a good level. And so we work uh, at INRA, it is a public service with different private partners, and we merge our experimental power to look at the same study together to the same experiment. Our goal was to look at the feed quantity of the digestive health. Okay. And we have a simple experimental design for all the partners, six partners, six experiments, the six same experiments in six different locations. And we have 500 rabbit per group, a control group. It is couple survey when you do an experiment, you still have a control group, which is ad libitum intake, 100%. And we compare this group with ad libitum intake from winning to 36 day old. And we have another group with 80% intake level compared to ad libitum. Another one with 70% of intake 
and another one with 60 percent of intake okay so a limitation of intake by 20 30 or 40 percent compared to animal having a free intake okay this is a manual distribution and we look at the mort morbidity animals that have problems of diarrhea but still alive and during the restriction we will see that when we restrict the animal by 30, yes by 30 or 40 percent we divide by two the morbidity rate compared to the ad libitum animals okay Uh, sorry, uh, when also we look also the mortality when animals were inoculated by uh, um, specific inocula of ERE, that means uh, enteropath, episodic rabbit enteropathy. And when we restrict the animal, we see that the animal were more, particularly in the pink, the pink curve. They are more resistant to this inoculation, okay, compared to free intake. Uh, and during resection, also, it's possible to reduce the mortality. And here it is a literature meta analysis. You will see six studies, and for all six studies, there were a reduction of the mortality. Uh, compared to ad libitum level, which is here, 100% on the X basis. So, a favorable impact of feed intake limitation for all the studies and for, I repeat, uh, for the European intensive system. We don't know exactly what is the mechanism implicated in this better S when you reduce the uh, intake. Uh, Maybe a better immune status, but we have only one study on this point. Maybe other physiological parameters. We look at microbial activity, but we don't see any significant effect. The bacterial community is quite the same. The mucosa morphology is quite the same, but we are still looking. Another important effect of the intake limitations and to limit the growth effectively, when you reduce the intake, you reduce the uh, growth, of course. I know this is uh, quite proportional. Feed intake reduction is proportional with weight gain reductions, but not exactly proportional. In fact, when you look at different studies, it is a literature meta-analysis uh, with many studies, you look that uh, this is not exactly proportional. And you are, that means you have a better feed efficiency, in fact. And when you look at the feed conversion, you will see here feed intake reductions. Okay. When you look at the x axis, you have 10, 20 feed intake reduction or more, 30%. And you have on the y axis the feed conversion variations. Uh, if you have a reduction of the feed conversion, that means a better feed efficiency. Okay. So here you see that for 30% feed intake reduction after the way you can have from 5 to 10 percent improvement in the feed efficiency of the animal. But you have large variability uh, according to the housing condition and so on and so on. Uh, after limitations of feed intake, you can have a return and come back to the ad libitum feeding. Okay. Then after ad libitum feeding, you have also uh, quite a, an improvement, a compensatory growth after restriction by 10 to 40 percent. With here, you see here a good improvement in weight gate and feed intake reduction. That means that finally, after, for example, three weeks of intake emission, you have only a five to 10% lower final weight. So it's a 
not so much lower. And also, after a feed intake limitation, you will see here during this, uh, this phase of uh, animals when they are returned to the animal feeding, the feed conversion is quite improved by 10 to 20 percent yeah, in this during this improvement. So, 5 to 30, 35 improvement for the feed conversion during the libitum intake after a phase of restriction. With the same figure, finally for the wool fattening period, uh, under this intensive system, you can have 5 to 10 percent, 15 percent improvement of the feed conversion if you limit the intake. Uh, this is true uh, for, I repeat, for European uh, systems with high growth rate after the really <clears throat> not true for other systems. I will pass as this figure because actually almost all rabbit farmers, uh, professional rabbit farmers in France are using the restriction strategy after the weaning because they reduce the mortality. You will see here, they can reduce the mortality from eight to three percent. They reduce the total weight, but finally, they if since they have more rabbits to sell, uh, the economical uh, expectation for the selling of the rabbits is the same huh? for if they can expect 4 euros 0.2 by rabbit cell. But they spare money, okay? Because the feed conversion, you will see here the feed conversion is a bit lower. And so since the animal consume less feed for the same growth rate, they have an economy of one of 20 sometimes 0.2 euro, 0.25 euro per rabbit cell. And the margin, finally, the margin of the feed cost for each rabbit cell is better uh, by almost uh, 0.25 euro per rabbit uh, when you use a restriction strategy. That's why every professional farmer use this system in the farm. Uh, but to uh, use a restriction strategy, effectively, it, you can reduce the use of the drugs, antibiotics, for example. And also, you have to give some higher labor time if you use a manual feeding or you are to invest in automatic feeding equipment, for example. Uh, I will pass on this one because I already give it. Okay. I will show here some equipment used by uh, European professional rabbit farmer, which is automatic feed distribution chain. Okay, you see. They, they, they have a panel to control this automatic feed distribution. They pay for this equipment. For example, you see the farm here. And so they can give the quantity of, of uh, uh, feed. They, they want to the animal. Now uh, we will uh, look at the feeding strategy at the farm level. And, okay. What is feeding strategy? They are, at the farm level, I have rabbit dough, lactating, rabbit dough, sometimes either lactating and 
gestating, and also animals like doe or male uh, without any productions by resting. And I have also young animals. And we see here, this is, a, for example, an example of the feeding and breeding system for a, a semi-intensive system in, a Europe, in European farms, okay? And more or less, there is a period you see in red when the young rabbits, before they're winning, are eating the same feed than their mother. The, you know already that the feed of the mother is the same than the proper litter, logically. So we can ask how many different feeds with, to fit correctly or precisely nutritional needs of each rabbit. You can have five, six feeds in a farm, maybe, maybe. Uh, if we can stick to the nutritional needs of each rabbit's category, for example, for adult reproducing female, uh, if she is milking a high liter size, you have to produce, to supply many energy, protein, and calcium. And for young rabbits, uh, for example, uh, around the winning, you need to have low energy and high fiber, etc., etc. Is it possible to have such a high number of feeds in the same farm? It's very difficult. Uh, maybe for a my five different fees might be possible for a small farm, might be. <laughs> if she is looking at very high performances, but concretely in European uh, uh, systems, like in France, we have intensive rabbit farming system that we call duo rabbit farming system. When you have two units, mixed when the units, the females are moving from one unit to another one uh, for uh, after winning. And in uh, concretely, in such a form, we have two or three uh, feed storage, feed silo in the farm. Okay. And if you have such uh, reproduction Extensive reproduction here, gestation, lactation, followed by a batting, another gestation, another lactation. So this is quite a bit extensive. You can use you can use low cost feeding system, as explained, and you have performances that are moderate or a bit low, but your income costs are low too. Okay, maybe for this low or moderate production, you can have moderate needs. And so you can have maybe one mixed feed for all the farm. This is correct because your, the performance you expect is not so high. But if you have a semi-intensive feeding system with a delivery interval which is shorter, more or less seven weeks or six weeks with higher letter size, higher growth rate for the fatteners. So you should have feeds that could be uh, more precisely adapted to the nutritional requirement of the dough differently from that of the fattening animals. For example, you have here the design of such a reproduction unit here, and you have uh, uh, at the same time, sometimes you have lactation and gestation sometimes. So very high need for the dough. If you have a strategy with a, with a single intensive system with free feed, with artificial inseminations, okay? You can have such strategy uh, in this form. This is professional form. 
a feed number one for reproduction seeing female, which is a milking a large eater, a specific feed for female, lactating female, another specific feed for young rabbit around the weenie with high fiber and lower energy intake, lower energy concentration. And also, you can have another feed for finishing fattening rabbit with a lower uh, protein concentration to limit the wasters and the nitrogen output. And for future reproducing female, you can have uh, feed two and then another feed and then three. In fact, in our system, we have to remember that human rabbits are different from reproducing females, so the feed should be different. So we have to make a trade-off female and young right, because they are in the same cage. Right? You see, see the needs for fiber, the needs for, and for the young, and the need for energy for the female. So uh, when the young rabbit is eating pelleted feed in the feeder of his mother, we have to change the uh, feed for a richer, for a feed richer in fiber and lower in energy. Well, this is a design that, uh, that shows the trade-off female youngs. You see uh, feed for female in orange till uh, 21, 21 days after the birth of the litter. And after we use a weaning feed, that is a mix, it is a trade-off for female and youngs. And after the winning, the female receive again a specific feed for uh, the reproducing female. And you see in the fattening cage below that we use the feed for specific for the winning, another feed for starting uh, or middle period of the fattening, and sometimes another one for finishing specifically the fattening. So when we speak about fee strategy, uh, in European system, we have to balance among the digestive health, the feed cost and the growth rate, and we have to choose the strategy. Okay. We sometimes also have to manage the feed restrictions for the fattening rabbits after the weaning. We have to calculate uh, and to uh, implement the feed strategy according to the level of performances expected and to the market type. For example, if you have to uh, every week to supply for local shops and so on, uh, and to have a specific weight of uh, rabbit cell, you have to analyze your, your feed also for the labor time, etc. I will finish uh, uh, my presentation by some practical considerations about feeding, and, uh, about ingredients and feed formulation. So again, if you have high production level, you have obliged more or less to use pelleted feeds with adequate uh, vitamins and mineral uh, premix and good formulations according to the type of rabbit, dough, fattening, more or less copy and parse the standard recommendation in the European books. Special attention to drinking and water quality in these systems. If you have medium to moderate production level, you can use pelleted feed at farm, it's possible to have pelleting at farm. Uh, and you can use the calling regions plus some minerals and you can have home feed formulation to limit the cost. Uh, you can have also flour or mash with mixed forage and grains and byproducts to have a low feeding cost. And you can even have moderate to very low pollution level 
and you can feed all you with plants, with byproducts, and so the your cost will be very low. You can find the nutritional value of many tropical forages and many byproducts for the rabbits in this website. It is a free website, this is Feedipedia. Uh, and it's very uh, nice site to learn a lot about the composition of the ingredients and the nutritional value of the ingredients for many animals, many, many animals, ruminants, poultry, rabbits, pigs, and so on. Uh, so effectively to make uh, at farm uh, formulations, you have to teach uh, the, about the quality of your plants and your ingredients. Okay. Other free access tables is this one. Again, is a very interesting uh, for uh, European ingredients, particularly. So when you are uh, preparing a new feed for rabbits, for example, you have to select the right ingredients, okay? To look at the content of nutrients, particularly energy, protein, and fiber, okay? And sometimes uh, you will see that the digestibility is not very good, for example, uh, if you look at the setaria, golden millet, you will see that it's very poorly digested by the rabbit because it contains some tannins, for example, some anti-nutritional factors. Also, under hot climate conditions, you have frequently lignified fibrous, fibrous feeds that increase the heat output and the heat load at the time that the animal is already under considerable heat stress. Thus, arranging feeding with not too much lignified or containing ingredients with low fiber, high energy content, produce less metabolic heat may be beneficial, uh, particularly for the lactating. Um, Many agricultural and industrial byproducts are uh, possible to be used in the feed of the rabbit. Uh, there are special, uh, for example, uh, special mention for oil cakes, groundnut, palm nut, and coconut, cotton seed cake. Be yeah, careful also uh, because there is gossipal, uh, etc. You can use also maize and rice byproduct, wheat, dwarf, or citrus pulp, possible also. So many, many things are possible to be used uh, for rabbits. Here is some tables from FAO, uh, which is also free to, to be downloaded with some uh, composition. Okay. Uh, and also you can. Uh, Graze, have grazing rabbit or pastured rabbits. In France, they use uh, movable cages like that. Okay. And uh, it's possible to produce, uh, uh, for example, in this such uh, good pasture with natural meadow without fertilizer. They produce, this farmer is producing almost 1.2 uh, tons of carcass by, by year. Okay. So with, with a good plot of grass, you can have a good growth of about 15 to 20 grams a day by direct grazing, for example. The problem is the protection from the predator, etc. But it's possible too. Uh, as I said already, you can feed it with many plants, forage, byproducts, uh, household wastes, etc. So uh, uh, if you use uh, such feed, you have very, very low cost feed. Uh, when, if you expect um, a bit more performance and you want to formulate a complete feed for the rabbit, you have to make a list of ingredients, 
available for you to look at the chemical compositions. You can look at the red tables, okay? And look at the nutrient requirement for the rabbits you have, depending on the performance uh, you have. And you can use uh, formulation software like uh, this one uh, with DA, uh, WU FFDA, which is free software, which is available in the World Rabbit Science Association website. It is a simple, quite simple Excel sheet if you have some principle of formulation. Uh, remember, you can feed during the coolest period, for example, early in the morning or at the end of the day, because the rabbit have a nocturnal feeding behavior. You see. Sometimes people are reluctant to use painted feed because they estimate it is industrial feed, it is not natural, but you can make pellets with uh, very natural ingredients because it is only a mixing and combination of several ingredients, but compress, grinded and compressed to make a pellets uh, like for cats or for dogs. To uh, have more uh, education in nutrition, look at this book, which is free to download in the website of World Rabbit Science Associations. You can also download the book of the FAO, Rabbit Breeding and Pathology, which is with some uh, items for tropical conditions, tropical productions. It's very interesting. Uh, use this uh, Excel sheet for formulations, but the Excel sheet adapted for rabbit feed is in the website of World Rabbit Science Association. You can download at this uh, address. You will see a screenshot uh, of how to formulate with this Excel sheet. It's quite, quite simple, but need uh, a bit of education, of course, huh, to use it correctly. And you can also prepare a bit uh, small quantities with small machine, huh? small mixing machine here and painting machine below, you will see. Uh, so with a grinder, this machine when a grinder is sufficient to have a uh, painting machine is sufficient to prepare. Uh, quantities of plated fees adapted for the rabbit. You will see here, it is a photo of a plating machine, a small, I think, Chinese plating machine, which was used uh, in Indonesia. I think it was in Bali Island. On the right side, we will see photos that for sun drying of fodder, um, a grinder below, so with a small machines possible to prepare. Uh, good feed if you are educated in the preparation of this feed. Uh, if petted feed, again, look at the quality of the water. Petted feed mean dry feed. Now look at the quality of the water. Here you see when you have a two, two salted water, right? it is rounded in red. Two salted water mean live weight reduction, for example and also feed intake reduction. So the quality of the feed is important too, quality of the water. Um, to finish, uh, it needs, for example, further studies, further research for nutritional value of tropical forage and byproducts for the rabbits. But there is studies at this moment huh, in many countries like in, Indonesia, Malaysia, and so on, that look at these forages. Uh, technical assistance to rabbit breeders to develop their skill in field management is very important too. If you have a high or medium-sized rabbitry, teaching the feeding and setting ingredients and pelleting is important to, 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 to meet the expectation for such a high size rabbitry in terms of economy. Extension program also to stimulate the orbit farming, including backyard arbitrary is very important too, I think, to produce uh, rabbit 
at the uh, house level, for example. And in many, many countries in the world, you have such outdoor rabbitry, forage-based feeding in the USA, but also in Africa, Ghana, Kenya, etc. You have many success, uh, for example, in Kenya, uh, rabbit uh, productions. We see some photos. Mm -hmm. There are some uh, extracts from the books with production of rabbits is very poor condition, but correctly producing for a family, okay, and alleviating the poverty, of course. It is examples of possible housing, uh, okay, with uh, systems uh, for ventilation, natural ventilation, and so on. Uh, rabbit farming is very efficient for poverty alleviation. Uh, particularly if the breeders are gathering, are discussing in group and helping together, either for the feeding, like you see at the right side, or uh, helping together for selling the rabbit and presenting the rabbits for the, to the consumers. You see in various countries in the world. Again, uh, for the students and the teachers, look at this uh, website, the World Rabbit Science Association, you have many, many uh, scientific documents, <clears throat> and particularly, you have the proceedings of the last World Rabbit Congress, which is which are freely available online at the website. And you have also the record of the presentation, and there are keynote people, and they are, they are very interesting uh, for those who want to be uh, more uh, to have more knowledge on, on rabbit sciences. So now I, I thank you for, for your attention. Uh, and I, I finished my talk. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I have ready to, to reply to these questions. Thank you very much. OK. <clears throat> thank you for the amazing lecture about the rabbit. And now I would like to offer a chance for the audience who wants to ask questions. Please, if any question. Hi, Nice to. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Direct to Dr. Thierry. Thank you very much. It's very, very interesting presentation. Um, well, as our farmer is under tropical condition, I would like to have some suggestion from you as an expert in the rapid science. Well, you have already presented about the table of nutrient recommendation for European condition. And uh, because our farmer is starting to give rapid in the form of complete feed, either in, in mesh or pellet, or mostly in pelleted form, so uh, modification of of nutrient requirement under European condition to tropical condition should have a benefit to our farmer. Uh, what is your recommendation to have a modification? What kind of nutrient have to be modified to adjust to a tropical condition? The second question is about the importance of starch in the rapid feed. You did not uh, explain a lot about that, but I read some publication with regard of the use of starch in in the importance of starch in in rabbit feeding. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for these uh, very interesting questions. Alors, for recommendation for tropical uh, climates, as I said is uh, largely depending 
of what you expect for rabbit performances. If you are farmers that already have good performances, you have to measure these performances, huh? the number of liters per year, the number of kids per liter, the growth rate of the rabbits, you have to adjust uh, effectively the requirements or not, depending. For example, uh, all the requirements that are in the book are for European uh, farming uh, with high performances and a high uh, reproductive rhythm. So according to your performances, you don't you, do, you may not need so high requirement in energy, so much high requirement in protein. You can reuse by five, ten percent if the performances are five, ten percent lower than in the European condition. Okay. Even for very low, for uh, model weight production or backyard production, you can have a pelleted feed that are mixed with a minimum of, for example, 13% protein, etc. You can be used by 20%, 30% even the content of energy. Uh, about the lipid, uh, yes, it is possible, as I said, to add some lipids, particularly for the animals that have the highest energy uh, requirements. It is, for example, the lactating female. It's very important to supply to them many energy if they have a high liter size, as explained. So you adjust, it's possible to, to add some two to three percent, four percent lipids in supplement, huh? in, a, in a feed, in a pelleted feed, without impairing the quality of the pellets, huh? the hardness, for example, and so on. So, all is depending on the, the systems and the performance of your systems, in fact. You have to adapt. Uh, any other questions? Please. Terima kasih. Yeah. Saya berbahasa Indonesia ya. Baik. Oh. Terima kasih atas kesempatannya. Tadi saya cermati apa yang disampaikan Pak Eri tadi itu sangat menarik sekali. Tapi saya nggak tahu kena apa konsumsi air itu sebagai tolak ukur dalam beternak kelinci. Itu yang apa namanya yang ingin saya tanyakan. Padahal uh, di dalam beternak kelinci itu memang benar air itu sebagai tolak ukur. Tetapi kenapa sebenarnya secara sains? Itu yang pertama. Kemudian yang kedua. <tuh> Kenapa pelepasan panas secara basah dan kering tidak diperhitungkan dalam penjelasan tadi? Jadi heat loss-nya itu tidak diperhatikan. Heat loss yang kering sama basah, dry sama wet-nya itu tidak diperhitungkan. Kenapa? Nah, kemudian yang ketiga, Sebenarnya produktivitas kelinci yang baik itu berapa sih? Dan bagaimana cara menghitungnya? Saya kira itu aja. Terima kasih. Jadi, kita Maybe I can help to translate it in English. It's interesting lecture, but there are three questions from Prof. Yunus. First is about uh, uh, why the water, the water drink by the animals is a, is a benchmark 
for the feeding rabbits for uh, rabbit feeding why well, so i repeat the question yeah this is about the water the water supply yeah water supply by the okay. animal is a uh, uh, that's rabbit is a, so rabbit is a mammal. He, he need a water supply similar to uh, ruminant, poultry, to pig, etc. So he need water, whatever. If you have uh, green forages or uh, plants or ingredients that are rich in water, it's possible to have a very low water supply. But if you use dry feed, pelleted feed, for example, which is very low in water, 10%, no more, it is obviously you need a very important supply of water of good quality. Uh, look at the quality also. Uh, and I show that for a lactating dough, for example, uh, she is able to have 300 grams per day of dry pelleted feed. Can, she can take 300 grams, so you have to supply at least 700 grams of water. That means two thirds of a liter of water, I mean, at least. So it's very important to, uh, if you have a dry feed, huh, to have good water uh, supply. Second question. The second one is uh, why did you include the dry heat loss and wet heat loss and explain them about the uh, thermal balance heat loss heat loss what, what, dry heat, heat loss, loss or wet yes. heat loss yes, yes. heat loss uh, yes this is particularly important uh, in uh, effectively uh, in hot season so the rabbit is able to loss heat through the years and he cannot lose a lot of heat through respiration because he respirates only by the nose. Okay. Uh, and so, in many conditions, you have to give uh, ventilation, natural ventilation, for example, and to have, uh, if possible, dry feeds, feeds uh, which are very appetent to try to improve uh, the feed intake of the rabbit because under hot condition, basically the rabbit is reducing by 10, 20%, even 30% the intake. This is particularly important for uh, lactating animals. Eh? And if you see lactating uh, dough that have a body weight loss, when she is lactating, you have to be very careful about uh, water intake because during hot season, uh, water intake is higher, and to, to give to the female very appetent feeds, if possible. Okay, and the third one is uh, about uh, what is the parameter of good rabbit production, actually? Parameters of daily good, production. Good, good, good rabbit production. Good. Uh, Rapid productivity. Yeah, about? Rapid productivity. Oh, uh, about good rabbit productivity. Ah, profitability. Productivity. Productivity. Rapid productivity. Productivity. Yes. Which is good. Yeah. <laughs> Alors, it is good when the work of the farmer is compensated by money income when he is selling the rabbits. Okay. Uh, this is the economic balance that defines the good system. If uh, the income for producing rabbits are very high, for example, high income for vaccination, for antibiotics, high income for feeds, high income for cages and so on, and you have a low production. So this low production, for, obviously, uh, you can not compensate for the high income. So a good system is when the production costs are largely compensated by the um, 
income cost, okay? So that the farmer could remunerate the time of labor, okay? So, How many percent? So, according to the farming system, intensive or semi-intensive or extensive, all the systems are good. You can have a moderate production if you have moderate income cost, no problem. But if you want to have a high production with a good salary, effectively, you have to look very carefully to the housing condition, vaccination, feeding quality, water quality, and so on. And also to the breed of the rabbit you use, depending of what you want to expect and to have. Okay. All the systems are good. <laughs> okay. Okay. And the rabbit is able to adapt to many, many different systems, many different. To the smallest one, to the very intensive one. But very intensive need technicity, need many things. When money uh, come to it, it was a two two thousand nine hundred percent. Di Indonesia itu dua ribu sembilan ratus persen sekitar itu. Kalau di Perancis berapa? Kalau di negara lain berapa? Sehingga Indonesia termasuk baik apa enggak ini kalau 2.900 persen produktivitas ternak kelinci. Uh, he, is, he said that in Indonesia the productivity is about 2.900 persen. How about in uh, how about the, uh, in France? 2.900 persen of what? I don't understand. Mungkin Pak Yunus bisa menjelaskan 2.900 persen itu dari mana Pak? Dari formula, dari rumus, rumus yang dari Jerman. Certain formula. Rumus dari Jerman. Dari apa? Feed formulation. Jadi berat hidup, jumlah lahir, jumlah anak. Kali bobot anak dalam satu tahun, kali persentase karkas dibagi bobot induk, kali 100 persen. Ketemu adalah 1900 persen. Mungkin bisa ditulis di chat, Pak. Di chat. Saya tidak tahu cara menulisnya. Oh, iya, iya. Oke. Okay. Um, he mentioned about the formula uh, tentang... Uh, by the life weight time formula for the lactating uh, formula the, dari Jerman oh from Germany yeah the formula is from Germany about uh, productivity yes. of the animals yes the formula from Germany yes and what uh, bisa diulang Pak Yunus apa apa variabelnya Number of Jumlah litters anak, kali bobot anak times uh, weight of kids jumlah anak kali bobot anak yes uh, dikali persentase karkas times the karkas percentage dibagi bobot induk divide by uh, due weight kali 100% times uh, 100% itu produktivitas kelinci itu. There is a rabbit productivity. I am sorry, I, I am not understand the, the, the question correctly. Maybe by if you return the question, the discussion panel. I can understand. I, I can also reply to questions by email. Also, it's possible. Okay. No problem. Okay. Because the time is limited. So maybe another question. Is it dreaming or is it handy? Any question? Or students can ask him also.
I suppose you have uh, disseminated the presentation to the students and to all the participants. Oh, all people are free to use it as they want. If you, you can reuse it for lessons, uh, I uh, invite you to read again the presentations. Don't hesitate to ask some questions by email. I will try to, to reply also to the question by email later. No, no problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, ada pertanyaan lagi? Okay. Sudah cukup ya? Oke, okay. uh, consider for the limit time. Thanks. Uh, which all the question already asked and with the time limit question today. Uh, Again, I appreciate the time and effort given by Dr. Thierry today to attend our guest lecture. Merci, Yukam. I hope today's session is beneficial to all of us. And with this, the future class is over. Good afternoon, and other audience are allowed to leave the Zoom meeting. Thank you all for your time and see you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for your okay. invitation. Yeah. It was a, a very good, a very nice, high honor for me to, to present some things. Effectively, online lecture is not so easy than in presence <laughs> uh, presentation, <laughs> but uh, uh, maybe for the next time uh, it would be more easy to present uh, such uh, topics more quiet with uh, without time limitations, more more quiet and so on. <laughs> Thank you very much again. <laughs> Okay, thank you. See you. Au revoir. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Good afternoon, Pak Nurkolis, Bu Ita. Ye, Rini. Terima kasih, Pak Bu. Terima kasih, Pak Bu. Terima kasih, Pak Bu. Terima kasih, Pak Bu. Terima kasih, Pak Bu.